shouldn't put that engine in that car. I'm losing my mind right now. We love engine swaps around here, but they're starting to get a little out of hand. Today we're talking about some of the most impressive and downright irresponsible engine swaps on YouTube where I live. I'm James, this is the Monolist, and this is the d d d d d list We're gonna kick the list off with a K-swap. And no, I'm not talking about c there are a million K-swapped cars on YouTube right now. It's a great engine, makes a lot of sense. But one of my absolute favorites is from our friend from Stanceworks, Mike Burrows. He's got a K24 swapped Ferrari 308. Why would someone put a Honda minivan engine in a Ferrari? Well, the original engine that came in the 308 was a V8. Good for a good old 163 Italian horsepowers, but that wasn't good enough for my boy Mike. Mike has built a bunch of really crazy stuff. And he's building this yellow Ferrari into a time attack car and he needs a little bit more power, baby. A thousand powers to be exact. Turns out one of the best ways to do that is with a turbocharged K-Swap. These K-Series engines are cheap. Honda made like a billion of them and they can handle a ton of power. Mike has been documenting the whole build over on his YouTube channel, Stanceworks. I'm gonna put the link in the description along with all the channels that we're featuring on this list. This is a really impressive car. Some might call it outrageous, but we aren't even close to as outrageous as we're gonna get. We're gonna get way out there, outrageous. Well, our next swap is also a Ferrari, only this one has a big fat Chevy B8 situated in the engine part of the car. And this ain't just any Ferrari. It's a 1963 250 GTE, and these things are worth like half of a million dollars. That's $500,000. The mad scientist who built this sick creation is named Joe. So guess what? He calls it the Joe Rari. <laughs> when he bought it, it was literally a discarded body shell that someone ripped off a chassis so that they could make a clone of the Ferrari 250 GTL, a much more expansive car. But as I always say, one man's Ferrari trash is another man's Joe Rari. I say it all the time, ask my mom. She lives with me, I don't live with her. So Joe built a custom chassis which houses a DZ302, one of Chevy's best small block V8s ever. Plus, it also has a Viper transmission, Psst, a Ford rear end, and a Mitsubishi paint color. And guess what? Ferrari owners were not happy about it. I think that's cool. So it earns a coveted spot on the all-knowing monolist. Uh, I'm legally obligated to say this, the Jorari was originally featured on Roadheads Media, one of the esteemed automotive publications. Uh, congrats on your 1,000th sub, you guys, well earned. That's Max's old YouTube channel. Did I do it right? Can we move on? But enough Ferrari talk, let's move on to a car for everybody, a car known for not having any power. I'm talking about Prius. Now a few years ago, we saw this video of a rear wheel drive Toyota Prius ripping around a track with one Jay-Z under the hood. That's what they put in a Toyota Chaser, all right? But we will not be including this one Jay-Z swapped Prius on the list because it ain't got a one Jay-Z anymore. Jack! It's got something weirder. It's got a freaking Barra swap. Barra engine is an inline six cylinder produced by Ford Australia for the Falcon. It's basically Australia's two Jay-Z and it's a certified beefcake casserole or hot dish depending on where you're from. All right, a stock bottom end can handle 600 horsepower. I'll tell you, that's more horses than most bottom ends can handle. Most people's bottom ends can't even handle one horse. <laughs> Back to the elephant in the room, which is Casey's Prius. Now you might be wondering, how does one fit a four liter inline six into a small engine bay of a Toyota Prius? Well, you learn to fabricate and you make it fit. He built a tube front end to house the engine and also protect it because it's a freaking drift Prius. It's freaking sick and it belongs on the monolist. That was a Japanese car with a Ford engine, so let's flip the script. Do a Ford with a JDM power plant. I'm talking about one of the most hyped builds of the last year, TJ Hunt's RB26 Mustang GT. You know how they did this swap in Tokyo Drift? Well, TJ was talking to Sung Kang a while back and Sung told him that he preferred the look of the Mustang over the Bailside RX-7. This is what inspired TJ to make his own interpretation of the car from the movie, but he made it even better. Still has that classic fastback styling and you never know there was a freaking GTR motor under the hood with a giant Garrett turbo. I mean, listen to this thing. 
what Ryan Literal's dreams are made out of. That's so cool. This swap took six months of work, and TJ made a lot of people mad by ripping out the perfectly good 351 Windsor. And for that, it earns a spot on the model list. Next up, we got a freaking V12 swap Miata. They put a V12 in a Miata? How? I don't know why. Beats me? Who? Some guy named Gareth. Okay, any more questions? No. For some reason, Gareth had a 1GZ FE from a Toyota Century lying around and needed a car to put it in. And the first car he thought of was a Miata. Does Miata really always have to be the answer for everything? Well, according to Gareth, it's the answer to this. He somehow managed to fit this beautiful V12 with ITBs and 12 into one exhaust under the hood of his dainty little Miata, all right? And if you want to check it out, you can find him on YouTube. That B12 Miata, bruh. Well, my friends, the absurdity hasn't even started yet. A fellow record saying that, your honor. We gotta talk about Tesla swaps. Right now, if you wanna swap a Tesla drive system into an old car, it's a complicated, expensive process, but it's totally doable and people have done it. All right, there's a number of interesting Tesla swapped cars over the last few years. The most recent one that caught our attention was this, a square body, Chevy C10 that debutted at SEMA, or as I like to call it, SEMA. It has two Tesla Model S motors and it's supposed to make over 800 all-wheel horsepower and like a million foot-pounds of twerks. Shouts to salvage the savage. Now, I think these swaps are only gonna become more and more affordable and common in the next few years, but you know what's not? The literal opposite! I'm talking about putting a combustion engine inside of a Tesla, more specifically, a freaking LS. Rich Rebuilds is known for fixing busted Teslas and doing electric tomfoolery over on his YouTube channel, but he also recently took an LS3 from a Camaro SS and managed to fit it in the front of a Tesla Model S. And if he's not calling it the Model SS, I'm calling the cops. But this isn't just a typical hodgepodge SEMA build. It took him over a year to put together and he had to take some extreme measures like cutting the floor pan in half so the manual transmission had a place to go. I mean, it's gotta go somewhere. Rich is even building it in stages and is eventually gonna pop a supercharger on that LS3. Breaking news since we filmed this episode, Rich Rebuilds has announced that he is also making a Cummins swapped Tesla. So guess what? That's on the list now too. Speaking of flipping the script on LS swaps, here's a bonkers one, Rob Dom's rotary swapped Corvette. Now, a little bit of context, okay? LS swapped RX-7s are extremely common to the point of basically being a meme at this point. Now, a lot of RX-7 owners get fed up with the finickiness of the 13V rotary engine, so they opt for a more affordable and reliable power source, an LS. Rotary fans, I know that they can be reliable if you, if you treat them right. I love rotaries, I think they sound great, okay? So don't like torches and come after me like a bunch of villagers, because I'm not a Frankenstein, okay? I'm a man! Speaking of Frankensteins, Rob has been dabbling in the dark arts of rotary engines for a little while now. His four rotor swapped FE is freaking sick. So he decided to do the exact opposite of an LS swapped RX-7. He bought a C5 Corvette from a salvage auction and proceeded to swap in a dainty little 1.3 liter turbocharged 13V engine, which made around 550 hertz per. Not bad. Plus it sounds like a stuck pig. Get on the list! Rob has already purchased a salvage C8 and has promised that he's gonna rotary swap that one too. So if your panties are in a knot over the C5, they're gonna be in a big knot soon. I would like to take this moment to give an honorable mention to Stan Key's Garage. We were gonna give them a top spot on this list for the Honda RSX powered by not one, but two LS engines. One in the front, one in the back, but project was a little ambitious and now the tiny Honda is only powered by one LS engine. So good on you for trying Ryan, but the monolith says you gotta have two LS's to make it on the tap. So now is when the list finally starts to get insane, as if it wasn't already. Every single engine up to this point has been a car engine. But what if you wanna go crazier than that? Yeah? You wanna kick it up a notch? You sicko? Let's see if this next car doesn't make you wanna barf out of your nose. A Ford Crown Victoria with a twin turbocharged tank engine. What? A team of Swedish automotive deviants from the Meteor Interceptor YouTube channel managed to swap this 27 liter 
B12 into a car. That's nine bottles of Faygo. They're three liters. The engine was made by Rolls-Royce and was used in British tanks up until 1965. How it found its way into American cop car in Sweden is beyond me. But if you want to see how they did it, check them out on the tube. And somehow this isn't even the most outrageous, unnecessary, completely irresponsible swap on this list. No, that distinct honor goes to a Volkswagen New Beetle. Hmm. What engine could possibly be in one of those? I wonder, a TJ? An SR? I don't know, freaking Bugatti engine. We're going tanks already, no? What's the only thing cooler than a tank? Freaking jet, that's right. This bad boy's got a jet engine in it. Jet bug, jet bug. This absolute unit of a beetle was built by a freaking psychopath by the name of Ron because he felt like he, the world didn't have enough chaos. The tricky part with engine swaps is passing smog, especially if you live in California, which our friend Ron does. He wanted to make his VW a little faster, but didn't want to get in trouble with the old DMV. So the solution that he came up with was to keep the original engine under the hood and mount an auxiliary jet engine in the trunk. Normal stuff. Nothing to see here. Definitely street legal. Oh, that back there, that's a grill. I'm giving it to my daughter for her birthday. You're probably wondering how much power a jet engine like this makes. And Ron has said that he doesn't want to see how fast it is out of fear of killing himself. But the T58 turbo shaft engine is rated for around 1,350 horsepower, but that's not even why it's the most bonkers car on this list. The real reason is the price tag. This thing showed up on Greg's list last year. Yes, Greg's list. With an asking price of $550,000. And I thought my swapped VW was sketchy to drive in California. I'm just working on my uh, old hog here. And you know what I realized? We just hit six million subscribers, dudes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. And just like with every major milestone that we have here at Donut, we're gonna release a limited edition six million sub sticker so that you can show everybody that you are part of the crew when we hit this number. Uh, this is like one of my favorite designs that we've done so far. I think it's super sick. It's only available for a very limited time. Go get yours today at donutmedia.com. And again, thank you guys so much. This is way bigger than we ever thought it could be. We love you all. I love you. Thank you guys for watching this video. We have a lot of fun making these lists. If you want to see more videos like this, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Don't just consider it, do it! Or I'm calling the cops. Love you.